When Mendel did his experiments at the time, neither the genes were discovered nor, nor chromosomes were known. Later on, Sutton and Bovary were the two scientists who observed certain features and they gave the chromosomal theory of inheritance. These two scientists observed that there is a quite a similarity between the factors which were actually the genes. We know them as genes, but Mendel called them factor because at the time genes were not discovered. There were quite a few similarities between the genes as well as chromosomes. We all know that the genes are found in pairs in diploid condition. And at the time of gamete formation during meiosis, they become haploid, they separate. Diploid means having two sets of chromosomes and haploid means having one set of chromosomes. Same thing was observed when the chromosomes are seen and when the chromosomes undergo meiosis, the same thing was observed. They are also found in pairs. They also separate at the time of gamete formation, that is they become haploid at the time of meiosis. On the basis of these similarities between genes and chromosomes, Sutton and Bovary they gave the chromosomal theory of inheritance and as per this theory, the genes or factors are actually located on the chromosomes and the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment which was actually shown by the genes is also shown by the chromosomes. We can say that the diploid condition means having two sets of chromosomes wherein one chromosome is received from the pair father and the other chromosome is received from the mother. And this diploid condition is found in somatic cells. Somatic cells are all the body cells. Here double number of chromosomes are there and similarly the genes are also diploid. And when the meiosis happens at the time of gamete formation, they become half in number and they become haploid. We can see here haploid that is one set of chromosomes and this postulate gave rise to one statement that genes are actually located on chromosomes and now we know they are made up of DNA. that is deoxyribonucleic acid. Many genes are found on the same chromosome and they can be very close also and they can be very, very far as well. We all know that in human beings there are thousands of characters which are being controlled by many genes. But how many pairs of chromosomes are there on in the human body? There are just 23 pairs of chromosomes wherein the genes are thousands in thousands. So how is that possible? How are these genes arranged on these 23 pairs of chromosomes. That means more than one gene is found on the same chromosome. And these genes, as I told, can be very, very close and they can be a little far as well and may be very, very distant. So many genes are located on the same chromosome. Linkage and crossing over. When the genes are present on the same chromosome, and they inherit as such, they pass on to the next generation as such. This phenomenon is called as linkage. So we can simply define it as tendency of two or more genes to be very close on the same chromosomes and their tendency to inherit in the next generation as such is called as linkage and that particular group of genes is called as linkage. 
This phenomenon was observed by Bateson and Punit. Bateson and Punit did dihybrid cross and they found that instead of 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 ratio, which should be obtained after dihybrid cross, they observed, they found the ratio of 7 is to 1 is to 1 is to 7. Now, this observation is only possible when the linkage phenomenon is there. That is the tendency of two or more genes to be inherited, to pass on in the next generation as such. But at the same time, there were quite a few recombinants also seen, new combinations also seen. And the, these new, rock, new combinations can only be possible due to another phenomenon called as crossing over. So we can say tendency of a group of genes which are present on the same chromosome to be passed on to the next generation as such is called as linkage. But we see quite a few recombinations also in the next generation that's possible due to another phenomenon called as crossing over. This is a pair of chromosomes, homologous pair of chromosomes means having the same set of genes controlling the same trait. Each, each chromosome has got chromatids, these two belong to same chromosome, so they are sister chromatids. These two are also part of the same chromosomes. They are also called as sister chromatids. These two are non-sister chromatids because these are belonging to two different chromosomes, though they are the same homologous pair of chromosomes. At the time of crossing over, There is exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids of homologous pair of chromosomes and this particular phenomenon is called as crossing over and this phenomenon is responsible for the appearance of recombinants in second generation after a dihybrid cross. We can easily see here that after the exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids of homologous pair of chromosomes, we see four types of combinations. This is just similar to the parent, so parental combination. This is again similar to the parent, parental combination. And these two are recombinants. And these two new combinations are only possible when there is exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids of homologous pair of chromosomes. And this particular point where the actual physical contact during exchange of genetic material takes place is called as chiasma. So, this is parental type, just similar to the parent. This is parental type, similar to the parents. And these two are recombinants. So, we can again, once again define linkage is the tendency of more than one gene to be present on the same chromosome and they pass on as such in the next generation as a group which is called as linkage group. At the same time, new combinations are formed due to crossing over. Crossing over is the phenomenon of exchange of genetic material between non-sister chromatids of homologous pair of chromosomes. The actual point of contact where the physical contact takes place and the actual exchange of genes take place, that's called as chiasma, which can be seen here and chiasmata is the plural form. This is about the linkage and crossing over. Let us talk about the mechanism of sex determination, not only in human beings, but in birds, insects and honeybees as well. In human beings, there are 23 pairs of chromosomes, out of which 22 pairs are similar in both 
male and female and these are called as autosomes. So there is no difference. These 22 two pairs are similar in both male and female and they are called as autosome. There is only difference of one pair of chromosome which is known as sex chromosome which is the 23rd pair. It is different. If it is XX, the individual is female. If it is XY, the individual is male. So it is the presence of Y chromosome which gives maleness to the individual. And at what stage of development is the sex decided or sex determined? It's only at the time of gamete formation. We can simply see here at the time of fertilization how the sex is determined. In human beings, sex is determined at the time of fertilization. We can see it here. This is the genotype of mother. This is the genotype of father. All the eggs which are formed in mother's body, they all have same types of chromosome that is X type. Therefore, in human beings, females are homogametic. Homo means same. So, all the eggs would be of same type because they contain X type of chromosome. Wherein is in case of males, in case of father, 50% of the sperms would have X chromosome and 50% of the sperms would have Y chromosome. And the males are said to be heterogametic. Hetero means different. They produce two different kinds of gametes. 50% of the sperms would have X chromosome and 50% would have Y chromosome. When fertilization takes place, if a sperm carrying X chromosome fertilizes an egg, the daughter is born and if a sperm carrying Y chromosome fertilizes the egg, the genotype would be XY and the progeny would be son. So in our country, in villages, it is said that the female is responsible for the maleness or is responsible for bearing of male child which is wrong. Why? Because here you can see scientifically none of the parents are responsible for bearing the son or the male child. It's pure chance, it's pure coincidence that which sperm is fertilizing the egg. If the sperm carrying X chromosome is fertilizing the egg, daughter is formed and if a sperm carrying Y chromosome fertilizes the egg, the progeny would be a son. So it's a matter of chance it is purely coincidental. So it is wrong to blame the females or the mother for not bearing the son in the families. This is first type of sex determination that is XXXY type. This is not only shown by human beings but also by Drosophila that is fruit fly and most of the insects. They also show the same type of sex determination. In birds, it is quite different. Let's see. In case of birds, the mechanism of sex determination is quite different. Here, females are heterogametic. Wherein males are homogametic. It is unlike human beings where the females were homogametic and the males were heterogametic. So males produce only one types of gametes containing Z chromosome, wherein females produce two types of eggs, either having Z type of chromosome or having W type of chromosome. So here females are heterogametic 
whereas the males are homogametic. In case of honeybees, the mechanism of sex determination is quite interesting. Let us see how. In honeybees, the mechanism of sex determination is quite different. Honeybees, it is a social insect. It has got three types of honeybees, queen bee, worker bees and drones. It is quite surprising and quite strange that drones are the males and they are formed from unfertilized eggs. Queen bee lays the eggs and worker bees are also females. that develop from fertilized eggs. So, here the mechanism of sex determination is quite different, quite strange, quite astonishing because the sex is determined by the number of chromosomes found in an individual. If the individual has got diploid number of chromosomes that is two sets of chromosomes that is called as drones or that develop into male wherein if the females are formed and they are the worker bees or the queen bee, they have got single set of chromosomes. So, here the number of chromosomes determine the sex of the individual. Next, we are going to talk about crisscross inheritance. We just found out that XX type of chromosome is found in females and XY type of chromosome is found in males and that is, that is required for maleness. The genes which are present on X chromosome, they are called as sex linked genes. And such type of inheritance is called as sex linked inheritance. Now, such types of genes which are present on X chromosomes that is sex linked gene, they are passed on from one individual from male to daughter and from daughter they are passed on to their grandsons or granddaughters. We can see this with the help of one example. The example is color blindness found in human beings. Color blindness means when the individual is not able to differentiate between red and green color and that is what is called as color blindness. Now, for this defect, the gene is found on X chromosome and it is due to presence of recessive gene. This is the genotype of a color blind father, wherein this small c represents the recessive gene which is controlling the color blindness. This is normal mother wherein small c is not there that is recessive gene that causes color blindness is absent. So, the mother is normal. We can see here this daughter would be containing this defective gene 
though the daughter will not suffer from color blindness because it's a recessive gene, but it would be a carrier of this gene. So this would be carrier female. This would be carrier female. This would be normal son or normal male. And this would also be normal son or normal male. Now here we can see that the father is transferring the defective gene to his daughter and daughter is going to pass it on to his children or to her children and this kind of inheritance is called as crisscross inheritance. We can see it further how colorblind father is passing on the defective gene to his grandsons or granddaughters. This is carrier female or carrier daughter which we have taken from here. Mary is a colorblind man. We can see here this daughter would be carrier, this daughter would be color blind, these two sons will be normal. Now in this experiment, in this cross, a color blind man, a color blind father has passed on his defective gene to his daughter and through his daughter to his granddaughters. Now this kind of inheritance is called as crisscross inheritance. Thank you so much.